Hi, I'm Fran Palmieri. I'm Director of Oncology Strategic Sites for Sarah Cannon. I think one of the important things to find out about when, when you're initially diagnosed or when there's been a change in your cancer status, you know, don't be afraid to seek out information. We have so many resources available. The Mini Pearl Cancer Foundation has excellent resources available and also persons to talk to about those possibilities. So I think we're kind of talking about at that point decision making. Sometimes part of that decision making is the fear of things you've heard. We might call them myths. So how do we address myths versus the facts that we know? I think there are just so many myths associated with cancer treatment, with drug treatment in general, but especially with clinical trial. In the past, there were great abuses to populations, to disadvantaged persons, where trials were conducted without their consent, without their knowledge. And those are some of the things that have been historically passed down. Now we know we have lots of protections to protect patients from abuses or uninformed participation in clinical trials. So now the clinical trial document itself is a very specific document that needs to be followed with safety built into that document. In addition, we know that trials have been surveyed over and over again. The National Cancer Institute actually did a survey and said, okay, patients, doctors, what do you think are the barriers to enrollment in clinical trials? And this myth issue came up a lot. And it almost progressed to more than myths. It almost progressed to fears, things we think about, things we worry about. Will this trial hurt me? How about these drugs? Do we know what these drugs are going to do? And I can address that, that we actually take this to an investigational review board, a panel of experts and community leaders who look at these trials and develop what's called the informed consent form. Within that form, it tells you every detail of the clinical trial. Side effects to expect, the most prominent, the least prominent, and in addition to the informed consent document that you'll review with each and every clinical trial, it educates you about the trial. So things to ask about that clinical trial. What kind of trial is it? What is the, the end point? What do you hope to achieve here? What do you know about the agents that you're studying? What can you tell me is going to happen in the course of my life while I'm on this trial? The number of days, how it will all go. And then, what do I do if I no longer want to participate, but originally said I could? And patients can come off a trial at any time for any reason that they have. Some of the other myths that I hear are about the management of toxicity and that drugs that are given in clinical trials are more toxic. I've had many patients say that to me. And I say, actually, what I can tell you is you will develop such a beautiful, and perfect relationship with your research nurse. They will coordinate your care. If I could, I try to get each of my patients to have at least one experience on a clinical trial to see how their health care really should be managed with cancer. What we can do as an oncology research nurse with that trial is help to guide you through it, to make sure really that you get almost more care or more diligent observance than you might have ordinarily. So they'll be there with you step every step of the way. We know cancer treatment can be very difficult. All diseases that have a very severe impact on life have, have treatments that also have those impacts. But with clinical trials, you have a research nurse a very savvy investigator because in order for a physician to participate in clinical trials, they have to have knowledge that surpasses any general knowledge, very specific and detailed. So you're kind of getting that best of care from all your health care providers within the clinical trial. 
reach for a person who can be your advocate and can help you. Sometimes that's the person sitting right next to you, your family member that you came with. Sometimes it's extended family and friends. I sort of say, you know, those people who help you with all your decisions in life can help you with these decisions about clinical trials and to overcome some of those myths you might be thinking about. In addition, your physician and your nurse have a lot of information to give you, and knowledge is indeed power when it comes to clinical trials. I've had patients ask me, well, if I go on a trial, my insurance isn't going to cover that. Isn't that an experiment? What they found from various studies done by the cooperative groups and by the NCI is that in reality, patients feared insurance failure to pay at a rate of 80% more than what they actually pay. So, in other words, clinical trials were paid for 80% of the time, even though patients thought that they would not. So I think that often that kind of fear can be overcome by research, by reaching out. Let's talk about that myth of placebo and how that works in trials. I think, you know, placebo was a word that was used to mean um, better than. And I think somehow over the years it's now changed to become something fearful in clinical trials. In truth, in cancer therapy, placebos are never used in place of a, of a treatment when a treatment exists. So it's very interesting to think about that concept with our informed consent forms that are done with these investigational review boards. We know exactly what to tell the patients the trial involves. So you will be part of that discussion of the trial and you will always know whether placebo is being used or not. How will you know? We have a standard therapy and it's adding an agent or not. But you may not know whether you're getting the agent or not. Why do they even do that? Well, there are a lot of things that may influence the way you feel. We know from certain trials in various diseases and types that patients can feel better. So we often in clinical trials look at these quality of life questionnaires to say, you know, is this therapy perhaps better because patients feel better? when they're on it than this other therapy. So using a placebo-controlled trial sometimes is very important so that neither the physician and the staff or the patient knows if they're getting the standard of therapy on both arms plus the investigational agent or not. But that standard therapy is always given. So you don't have to fear that you're just getting something that's nothing and that you don't know about it. That's an impossible situation in clinical trials.